Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to reload 223-556 into this. The first thing I like to do is dry tumble my brass to knock off any particulate that might be on the case. I use the Lyman's Turbo Tumbler and their treated media and their sifter. All right, the die set that I'm going to be using today is the RCBS 223 Remington uh, 556, a uh, small base die. Uh, when you're reloading for any R AR platform, you want to make sure to use a small base dies. In this die set, it'll come with two different dies. Um, you'll have your decapping, resizing die, and then your bullet seater die. So while I'm waiting for my brass to be tumbled, I put in the appropriate shell holder. I take the resizing decapping die, make sure it's the depriming pin is uh, protruding out the bottom of the die 3 sixteenths of an inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the ram all the way up. I'm going to screw in the die. Until it meets the shell holder. Once it hits the shell holder, I'm going to lower my ram and I'm going to screw it down um, about a quarter turn, lock the locking nut into place. And when I raise my ram, I should have what's called a cam over. And that's where the shell holder actually touches the, the die itself. You can hear that. That's the cam over. I'll do it again. So. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So after the brass has been tumbled and it's ready for case prep, um, this is where a lot of people go wrong. Um, what I've noticed is a lot of people will try to um, lube the shoulders. Uh, not a great idea because then it causes dimpling. All the expansion occurs um, at the bottom of the case. If, if I take this, and show you here, you can see where the expansion is, okay? So that's where all of the expansions occurring is right at the head of the case there. So all you need to do is take your case lube pad, put on some lube, not a lot. Lube the lower half to lower third of the case. After your case has been lubed, you're going to place it into the shell holder and run it to the top of the die. And now you have a fully resized and deprimed case. Now to make sure that you've resized your brass appropriately, I use a depth gauge just to see. And you can tell here that it's within appropriate measurement. So for case prep, I use a six-step process. I know it, it might be a little too much for people, but um, I like to make sure that my brass is uniform. I treat all of my 223 and 556 cases the, all the same. Um, I don't have time to sort out the 223 from the 556, so um, I treat them all the same by using uh, the RCBS prep station here. Um, we have the crimp remover, the pocket uniformer, and the flash hole uniformer. So I start off by taking the crimp out, pocket uniformer, and then finally the flash hole. To finish off the case prep, I use the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal case trim and prep center. Um, so I this will trim the case for me chamfer and deburr. I already have this set to the appropriate depth for the case. Place it in the mouth, push and you'll hear it. You may not, you may not be picked up on this video. And I chamfer and deburr. So to double check to make sure that your case trim length is appropriate, I looked in the Hornady uh, reloading manual and it's 1.75 inches. 
so I just want to double check to make sure that my case length is appropriate. Now that the case prep is complete, it has lube on it, and I want to make sure to get off that lube, so I'm going to throw it back into the dry tumbler for another couple of hours. Now, after dry tumbling the brass, sometimes you'll get stuck corn cob in the flash hole. So all I do then is run it through the flash hole uniformly. All right, now that your case prep is complete, it's time to prime. Now there's multiple different ways to prime. This is my choice. It's the Lee Auto Bench Prime Set. I use the, the small because we're using small primers. Number four casing, case holder, I should say, pardon me. Put my primers into it, open it up. So according to the Hornady reloading manual, um, a special consideration, the 223 Remington and the 5.56 NATO rounds, a couple of things that you'll want to just take a look at. You'll want to refer to your manual anytime you're working up loads. So please don't take what I say as gospel. I have my own recipe. I don't want to take liability for what I'm saying to you and then have something go wrong. I'd rather you do your research and, and work up your loads as you see fit couple of things that you'll want to take into consideration. Today, we're going to do a 55 grain full metal jacket. Um, so that's the first thing that, uh, with a can lower. So that's the first consideration, what type of projectile you're using. Secondly, the bullet diameter for the 5.56 and the 223 are 0.224, exactly the same. The case overall length is going to be a little bit smaller for the NATO round, 2.25. Whereas the 223 Remington is going to be 2.26. Uh, the max case length is 1.76 for both. And the case trim length is the same for both, 1.75. So since we're using a, a 55 grain full metal jacket with cantaloupe, um, I find that in the appropriate page. <clears throat> so here we go, 55 grain, full metal jacket um, with cantaloupe. Here is my cartridge overall length, which is 2.2. We're going to go down. I'm going to use H335 for this one, so I'm going to go down to H335. Again, uh, I'm not going to go to the lowest or to the highest. I'm going to go mid-road, so I'll probably do 22.4 grains of H335. So the 5.56 uh, NATO round, if we take a look at 55 grain, any type of projectile, they don't have one listed. I'm not going to tell you how I got there. Um, it's been through trial and error. Um, they don't have any H335 listed here. Again, this is just through my trial and error that I've come up with that recipe. Um, and it seems to work appropriately. So I have my powder thrower set up with the H335. I have my digital scale set is zero. It's ready to go. Um, we're gonna throw this and we're gonna measure it. It's gonna hopefully be at 22.4 grains. It didn't work, so we're going to go ahead and ease this out just a little bit until we hit the 22.4. Perfect. With your case that's been primed, we're going to insert it to the bottom all the way up, all the way down. It's really important that you don't do half swings. And then you'll want to double check to make sure that you have powder in your case so you don't have a squib load. All right, so now that your case is primed and charged with powder, you're going to place it in the shell holder. You're going to run it all the way up to the top. 
you're going to screw in your bullet seater crimper die just until it heat touches the, the mouth of the case. Now that it has, set your locking ring. Run your ram all the way down and back up your bullet seater plug. You'll take your bullet, place it into the case of the mouth. You'll run it up. And you'll continue to do this until you reach the cartridge overall length that you desire. So we'll continue to make adjustments until your bullet seating is to the appropriate length. So your bullet seat length should be 2.16. So we're dead on. Now to set up your crimp, you want to take your cartridge, place it into the shell holder, loosen your locking ring, and now you'll run this up to the top. You'll screw it down until you touch the top of the bullet. And then you'll continue to move this down incrementally until you get the correct uh, crimp. Now, one thing to note, you'll want to back up your bullet seater plug so you're not pushing your bullet into the case continually while you're working on the crimp. I've already done that. So now we're just continuing to run it up into the die until we get the crimp that we desire. Once we have the crimp where we want it to be, we're going to place the cartridge back into the shell holder, run it all the way up to the top, lock the locking ring. We're going to screw the cedar plug down until it touches the top of the bullet. Lock that into place. And now you're ready to reload your 223-556. Hey guys, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.